Good afternoon YouTube, my name's uh, Rob Pollard and I'm the developer for Sojour, the Solo VTT. This is going to be the third tutorial video and for this one we're going to cover maps, everything you need to know about them. Now when you first uh, run up Sojour, uh, initially a lot of these buttons are going to be disabled and you'll be figuring out uh, how do I add a map, there doesn't seem to be a way to do it. Uh, you really need to look at the first tutorial video and that will cover uh, the, the minimum bits and bobs you need to create in order to import maps. But in general, all you need is a rule set and a campaign. In this case, our campaign is Lost Minds of Vandelver and the rule set is Dungeons Dragons 5th Edition. And under your campaign, you'll have your, uh, your maps folder and that's where ultimately all your maps are going to end up. Sojour supports a variety of map functions. You can add a map from a file, which is pretty much what most VTTs do. You can also add a blank map, uh, and they're not actually so blank. You get a choice of various maps. We'll cover that later on. And you can even add a map from a screenshot, and it's the screenshot facility. It's, I, I don't know if it's unique, but it's certainly one of the strengths of Sojour. Uh, the fact that you can have your scenario book open and then use this feature to pull maps out of your scenario books that you can use in your adventures. And we're actually going to demonstrate that now with uh, Lost Minds of Fandelva. Now the, the reason why I decided to go with Lost Minds and Dungeons and Dragons for this particular video is because I, I believe up to now all of my videos have been showing maps in metric and I want to prove that we can do maps in Imperial as well. Uh, and the other reason is uh, the uh, Lost Wines of Fandelva, the maps, you tend to get them in pairs. You get a Dungeon Master map and a player's map, uh, one having a lot more information than the other. And I can show you some of the things you can do in Sojour as you're playing your solo game uh, to populate the, the player map. So it's, it's pretty good for that. So this is the uh, standard maps booklet that you can download. And we're going to be um, downloading three maps from this. So yeah, a bit of a spoiler warning. We're going to be downloading the, uh, the Sword Coast map, uh, the first hideout, which I believe is the Cragmore hideout, and also uh, the uh, town of Fandolin. So if you are playing this adventure, uh, I highly recommend you stop the video now and maybe watch it after uh, you've at least done the first section of the adventure. So th this is the map uh, PDF. Uh, and what we're going to kick off with, we're going to import Fandolin, uh, the actual town. And uh, if we open this up a little bit more, as you see, there are two of them. You've got this one, which is fully labelled and it's for the Dungeon Master. And then you've got the player's map, which has no labels on it at all. The idea being that as their characters run around Fandolin and explore it, they get to learn what the various buildings are. And uh, Sojo actually provides you tools to enable you to do that as a solo player. All right, so the first thing we want to do, if we want to import this map, is make it as large as you can on your desktop, basically, which is kind of what I've done there. And all you need to do, run up Sojo, and uh, when you go to add the map, rather than adding from a file, you just go add map from screenshot. You don't have to worry about Sojo being in the way, it automatically hides itself. So let's go click that. Once it's hidden, your uh, mouse cursor changes into a crosshair and all you need to do is left click once to set the top left corner of the map you want to import. So let's do that now. We'll do it on the item border. And at this point, you can release the mouse. I'm hands free and uh, it's still working. It's not like Microsoft screen capture where you've got to keep your finger down on the left button. You don't need to do that here. So now hands back on the mouse and we can wave this around and stretch it until the red border covers the area of the map that we want to import. I think that's about right there. And then one more left click, and then Sojour imports that in. So let's call that uh, Fandolin. And hit OK. And there you go. It's that simple in Sojour to, to pull maps into the system. Uh, and I think it's quite a handy feature. And it will also do the same uh, for these tokens up here, in that you can actually um, pull in token, uh, pulling characters directly from your scenarios, and Sojour will even create nice little circular tokens for you automatically. But that's for another video when I cover characters. So this is our uh, Fandlin map. Uh, 
it's not scaled right now we'll cover that in a second but the first thing I want to cover is uh, how you manipulate the map in terms of moving it around so social is primarily keyboard based when it comes to uh, navigating your maps I mean you can use the mouse you can use your mouse wheel and do that if you wish but it's far smoother to use the keys and uh, what social does is it uses the standard gamers keys that the wasad keys now I'm well aware that uh, many European keyboards aren't QWERTY keyboards and for them wasad is a really bad uh, key combination for controlling things but don't fear if you have one of those keyboards all you need to do is go to settings and then go to key bindings and then from here you can change your key bindings to anything that you want uh, and hopefully you can find something that suits your style. Uh, for me Wasad is perfect with the Q and Z keys for zooming in and out. But going hand in hand with that is the concept of focus. Now uh, because Sojour's maps primarily use the keyboard for navigating around them uh, the map needs to know whether it's in focus or not and the way this happens is with the mouse cursor so if the mouse cursor is not over the map using any of those keyboard commands makes no difference at all I'm pressing them right now and nothing's happening to the map in order for the map to move you need to make sure this mouse cursor is somewhere over the map and then it starts moving again uh, and the inverse is true as well if you have a journal open and you want to type something in your journal uh, you won't see any text if the mouse cursor is anywhere over a map and the reason why is because all your keyboard input is being directed to the map so if you want to write in a journal just move your mouse cursor anywhere but a map and it will just work so that's a, a very key thing uh, to take note of because I suspect some people might think it's a bug but it's not it's it's purely down to the way it's designed so we have our map uh, and as I mentioned earlier it's not really scaled although it does have a scale on it from the original map so what happens if we were to drag characters onto an unscaled map let's go do that now so you have a few issues with these characters dragging them onto an unscaled map the first issue is uh, at least in my point of view they look a bit big uh, you compare them to the size of the buildings and they do look a bit big I mean some people might like that uh, I mean in Sojour it doesn't matter too much because you can resize tokens anyway by using the mouse wheel but by default they appear a little bit too big also if I attempt to move one of them I get no feedback with regard to how far that move there would be if I select go of the mouse yes it moves there but I have no idea how far they've moved so that's the other downside of not scaling your maps and of course the actual measurement tools they're all greyed out so you, you couldn't measure anything so one of the things I highly recommend that you do when uh, as soon as you import a map is just scale it and we're going to do that right now and that, you do that by clicking this button here the scale map button and this brings you up this wizard so uh, this wizard it defaults to the measurement system of your rule set so I'm in the Dungeons and Dragons rule set that uses the imperial measurement system however you still get a choice and the reason for that uh, imagine if you will that you found an awesome map on the internet that you want to bring into your D&D campaign but that map is scaled in metric so if you were to look down at it scaling you'd see a metric bar here but nevertheless you still want it in your D&D campaign well, this enables you to do that insofar as you can pick metric uh, measure it up using metric units and then Sojour will automatically convert the map to Imperial uh, for use in your game. Uh, you don't need to do anything. Uh, of course, uh, any printed scales are still going to be in whatever units they're in, but the scales that Sojour presents to you, which I'll show you later on, they'll be in the appropriate scale for the rule set that you're in. And we're going to leave this in Imperial because it's what Dungeons and Dragons is using, it's also what um, this particular map is measured in. So uh, this first page, in essence, we're setting up our yardstick. So we're setting up a, a, a little ruler that we're going to use to define uh, the distances on this map. And uh, in this case, we're far better off actually picking the same distance that they've got on their ruler. So we'll leave it on feet, although you get a choice of yards or miles for Imperial. And we want to set a distance of 500. And you can type in this, so if 
you have to have a value that's not in here, that's not a problem. You just go types and values, so no problem at all. But anyway, we're going to leave that on 500 feet to match this one. Then we click next. And uh, what we do here, we can pick the annotation colors. And uh, this determines what color your scale is going to be in, but it also determines what color your measurement tool is going to be in. And you can make it any color that you want. Uh, I tend to leave it on red simply because red works very well with most maps, but you're free to change that to whatever you wish. So if we click uh, next again, uh, this is the bit where you actually get to scale the map. And to scale this map, all you need to do is click register scale. At this point, you can zoom around your map. And what you want to do is click the first point of your ruler. And I'm going to put it on a zero point there. And I see because I set my ruler to 500 feet, you can see it's got 500 feet written on the end of the, uh, the ruler there. And all I need to do is uh, measure 500 feet on the map basically and set 500 feet by left clicking again and we reckon 500 feet right there and I clicked it and so Jules calculations are that this map's width is 1116 feet uh, with a depth of 761 feet now I have no idea what that is in yards I'm a metric person but uh, that, that is correct and if we hit finish uh, it'll actually scale the map. Now, if you don't like the results, you can always click the button again or even go back through the wizard. It's entirely up to you. So click finish and notice we now have a scale and that scale will match this one up here. If we, uh, move it up. Yeah, so 30 feet, a little bit between 20 and 50 as you'd expect. So yeah, this map's now perfectly scaled. So that gives us several advantages. Uh, for a start, notice the characters that we had on the map, uh, they've their sizes have changed. Uh, uh, what social endeavours to do uh, is it, it unifies all your token sizes. Uh, the idea being that you can pull them in from all sorts of sources on the internet and invariably the images you find on the internet will be of different sizes. But Sojour will always endeavour to unify them so that all your tokens are the same size. But you can change their size. There's a setting uh, in the characters pane where you can specify uh, their relative size. Uh, both of these are set to relative size of one. And when they're on the default size of one, Sojour sets them up to be roughly about a metre across. Or is that three feet? Something like that. And that's why uh, these tokens got resized, even though they're already on the map. And I hope you agree, they now look like they fit the buildings a lot better. They, they kind of now look like they belong on this map uh, because their size kind of fits with, um, with with those buildings, whereas before they were just far too big. So that's one advantage, you get tokens that Sojour will endeavour to size in a way that makes them look good on the map. But the other advantage is, which you would have noticed just now if you looked at my characters as I was moving, if I move AIS, Look, he now has a little tooltip telling you how far you're right to move in. So there, if I let go of the mouse, he's going to move 19.61 feet. And uh, Cora, 11.7 feet. So now that I've scaled the map, I get these measurements for free. And of course, the, uh, the, the measurement tools are now available. Now, I'll take you through those. There are actually three measurement tools provided in Sojour. You have a range measurement tool a circular area measurement tool and a wedge area uh, measurement tool. Uh, and these tools work by being toggled on or off. And uh, what I'll do, I'll toggle one of them on, uh, which is in this case the range one. And you can tell it's on because it's got a blue border around the button. And now the first click sets uh, the start of our measurement. And then we can move it around and it's zoom stabilized. So if I zoom in or out, everything still works nicely and you still end up with something you can read because it is actually zoom stabilized. And all you need to do, move it to a place you want to measure and then when you click it a second time, the zoom stabilization stops and in effect the arrow becomes part of the map at this point. So it becomes fixed on the map. And then that's handy then because you can then move characters around, do all sorts of other things and, and know that from there to there it's gonna be 330 feet. Now, because the measurement mode is still on, as indicated by the blue box here, it means that if I click again, it will just start off another measurement and then a second click anchors it. 
So it's, it's that simple and it's, it's a pretty uh, intuitive system. So that's, uh, oh, and if you want to escape from measurements, there's two ways. You can either click the button again or hit the escape key and then that escapes you out of that mode. So uh, the other measurements that we can do are the circular ones, handy for those fireball spells. Um, and again, it's zoom stabilized, so if you zoom in and out, it all works very nicely. And it's all readable no matter what zoom level you're at. And once again, uh, if you left click a second time, the zoom stabilization goes and it becomes part of the map at that point. So you know, it moves around with the map. And uh, just like uh, with the arrow measurement, we're still in circle mode. So if we click again, we get a new center point and, and keep doing that. And again, if you want to get out of that mode, you just hit escape. So the final measurement mode is the cone or, or wedge measurement, uh, which is handy for some spells. And again, zoom stabilized, you can zoom, pan, do whatever you want, and it all looks pretty good. Um, now this one, in addition to doing the range, you can also set the width of the degrees. So right now it's 45 degrees, but if you keep your finger down on the left control key and use the mouse wheel, you can actually change that width. So there we're going down to 15 degrees, or I can go up to a much, much, much larger value. I believe I've tested it all the way up to 360, which is almost a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> but it proves the system works, and you can set that to anything uh, that you want. It's that simple. And then, you know, once you set the width up, just like the others, you click once to anchor it. And at that point, zoom stabilization stops and it becomes part of the map until you click again to do another measurement. So all pretty straightforward. And before I go any further on talking about uh, this particular map, I, I want to cover off uh, the data. Uh, where's your data going? When you import this map, where does it go and, and can you access it? And the answer is yes, you can access it. Uh, one of the core philosophies of Sojour is that any data in Sojour endeavours to keep it in a non-proprietary format so that you can go use any data you capture with Sojour in any of your own tools. Because I'm a great believer that this is your data and a lot of the times you've put in a lot of hard work for it, so who am I to encode your data to stop you from using it? Now obviously there are some bits in Sojour which I can't help but make um, proprietary like calendars for instance, there's no way around that. Uh, although those I do give you the ability to export and import them. But anyway, going back to maps, if you wanted to see where this piece of data actually was on your hard drive, all you need to do is go to the maps folder, right click, and there's a browse folder button. And in fact, this browse folder option is available on, on nearly everything on this tree view. So any data that you have on the tree view, if you want to see it on your hard drive, right click, hit browse folder, and that will take you straight there. And there's our map. And as you can see, it's a bulk standard BMP file. You can double click it and open it up in a, a bulk standard um, uh, image editor or whatever else uh, you wish to open it in. So yeah, very handy tool. And the same uh, for tokens as well. So if you take advantage of Sojour's built-in functionality to create circular tokens, you could then use those circular tokens in other tools if you wish, simply by using the browse to function. So yeah, very handy thing to be aware of. Uh, and it is it is a core philosophy of Sojour where everything is stored uh, where I can in a non-proprietary format. So that's that bit out of the way. So we, we've got our Fandlin map and we've got our two characters there. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, many games you get two maps. So you've got this map, uh, which we imported, but you've also got the, uh, the Dungeon Masters map, the one with all the information on there. And uh, Social provides you tools to actually add some of this information. So for instance, this building here, which is where I believe our characters are outside right now, that's a smithy. So we can actually add that to our map. So the, the way you do it is by clicking this tool here, which is the add text tool. And what that does is it adds text based on your chosen color here, uh, which is red. And this color is independent of the color you use for your uh, measurements. So you can pick any color there. So this is a smithy, let's go enter that. There you go, there's our text. And you can do various things before you drop this text down. You can rotate it, you can resize it, 
and you can even change its opacity and I, I kind of like doing that to make it a little bit more see-through that's just me though but you, it's up to you how you do it and let's change its size a bit further down and there you go and maybe we'll put that there that's, let's make it a bit smaller and we, we could even invoke one of the line drawing functions and let's make that width three they were jumping ahead of ourselves here and draw a nice little line from there oh that's way too thick <laughs> let's get rid of that in fact let's not bother the lines <laughs> yeah that is way too thick uh, but anyway um it, you, you can add text to it uh, now, it's a limitation of social. Once your text is down, you can't edit it. Though, if you're unhappy with it, you can uh, remove it like that and then just re enter. Uh, that's something that, that will be improved with time. In fact, I actually do want to overhaul this text in the future because I want to give you, uh, I guess, a little bit more flexibility in terms of formatting. So, anyway, let, let's go put this back down again and change its size. And I'll make it a little bit more see through and just dump it there. So, oh, and uh, just like the measuring modes, these are in uh, toggled on or off mode. Uh, again, when it's on, the blue border's on. So every time I click now, it'll enable me to enter text. And it's designed that way, because generally speaking, when you want to enter text, you generally want to enter several bits of text at once. So the, the mode kind of stays latched on. And again, if you want to escape that mode, you either click the button again or hit the escape key, just like that. So now that that Smithy uh, text is part of the map, if you exit social and come back in, Smithy will still be there. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's now part of the map. And that's a great way to mark up your maps as your players explore it and discover uh, more and more. And when I say players, I really mean as you explore it, because this is obviously a solo VTT, but you, you get the drift. So yeah, it's quite a handy feature in that respect. And what we'll do next, we'll import the Sword Coast map because I, I want to show you a few things you can do with that uh, and the Cragmore hideout ultimately. But we'll, we'll start off with the Sword Coast map. So let's have a look at that one. So again, we got two. This is the one with all the, I guess, secrets on it. And this is the one without them. So we're going to go with the one without. And again, we're going to use Sojour's screen capture facilities to enable us to automatically import this map and it just saves so much time. So once again onto the maps folder, right click and then add map from screenshot. And Sojour disappears, you left click once to set your top left corner and then you just drag this around to where you want it, that looks right, right there, and left click again and there you go. Uh, let's call it coast. that's your mapping into the system and again I highly recommend with all your maps you scale it and I believe this one what's the scale on this there you go one hex five miles although I, whenever I see that I, I always wonder is it five miles from there to there or five miles from there to there because uh, the distances are a little tiny bit different we're, we're going to assume it's a crossways uh, and again exactly the same procedure to scale this you click this and uh, this time it's in miles so let's go pick miles and we want five uh, five's in the list. Uh, again, I could have typed it if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it red because I think red uh, matches this map pretty well as well. And then just hit register and then click. And of course, whilst you're registering map, you can pan and zoom and do all the other nice stuff you want to do. And there you go. We've now registered that map. Sojour believes it's 91.23 miles by 126.3 miles. And then hit finish. And you get a nice scale up here at the bottom there. So this is all where it's ready to go. So if we can imagine we were playing our Lost Minds of Fandelver and you know our characters are on the trail doing their adventure type stuff. So let's zoom in a bit. So uh, Sojour does provide you some facilities to enable you to mark your maps for any discoveries and it's not just limited to the text that we saw in the other example. You can actually add uh, what we call campaign assets to uh, the map. Uh, let me uh, edit this one to show you what it is. So a campaign asset, it's a token basically, but it's not a monster token, which you normally find under monsters, nor is it a character token, which you normally see up here. It's its own thing. 
and uh, you can import these either from a screenshot or again from a file and they have a few unique properties over and above uh, the other bits and bobs but I will show you those in the next tutorial that one will be focusing specifically on tokens and characters so what we've done here we, we've created this cave and what we've said is it it's not unique so I can drag this cave as many times to the map as I want and it will just work I've decided I want tooltips on ie when I wave the mouse over it, I want to see a tooltip I've also said I want to make it static and that's the important bit because what we're saying here is once this is dragged to the map it can't move uh, and the only way you could move it is by uh, unticking this later on and that will release the lock so uh, these become static so if we look uh, back on our sword coast map the um, uh, where are we the, the actual dungeon masters one you can see the Cragmore hideouts right here and what's that it's about a hex diagonally right of that junction so let's imagine if you will that our characters have done the ambush and we've now discovered the Cragmore hideout well that's easy enough to do in Sojour all you need to do is quite literally grab our campaign asset which is the cave drag it on and drop it and there you go we now have a marker to show our discovery and this this graphic could be anything I just happen to have imported a cave I found on the internet but you can you can use absolutely everything and of course the uh, the one downside is when you wave your mouse over it it says cave and that's not exactly descriptive so social gives you the ability to rename uh, the campaign assets that you drop on the map so this one's I believe it's Cragmore hideout isn't it yeah Cragmore hideout so let's go rename this to Cragmore hideout so rename Crag more hideout. Okay, that and now when I wave my mouse cursor over it, you can see it's the Crag more hideout. And it, again, it, it for all intents and purposes, it becomes part of this map. The mouse cursor stays as a crosshair when it's over it, telling you you can't move it. Whereas if you look at all your characters, they're all movable because the crosshair turns into a little hand. So uh, that's a pretty good feature. And of course, you can add drawings to this as well. Uh, what I will say is these drawing tools are quite crude. They will get improved in future iterations, especially as a lot of them came from ancient armies. In fact, a lot of the technology in Sojour came from my other project, Ancient Armies. And Ancient Armies has a few tricks up its sleeve which Sojour doesn't yet have. One of those includes Bezier curves, uh, and I'm quite keen to pull these in, which is why anything you see me draw right now is not going to look too good, but hey-ho, we have what we have. So... Uh, we're going to leave it red and I'm going to go for a line width of, I don't know, two and then we'll just draw a path. And there you go, uh, a hideous path, but we've drawn a path. I say the, the intent is to improve the drawing tools with time. Uh, uh, that's the thing to bear in mind with Sojour. Uh, we're at what, version 1.18. Uh, it's early days and so is just going to get better and better and better as everything gets iterated on uh, and as we add new features and it's had many new features added since version one uh, i've added many features that i thought were a good idea but i've also added many features that you folks thought were a good idea as well so there's an amazing number of of new functionality in this that um is in there because you folks have asked for it uh, and generally speaking, if, I, if you give me an idea using the email and the manual, and I think it's a good idea and I think it's doable, I'll, I'll generally go and do it. Uh, the only thing to bear in mind, uh, there's only one of me, and this isn't my day job. I'm actually a senior web developer by day. Uh, so I, I can only do the development on this when I have time. So it, it might be a little bit slow, but we'll get there. In fact, whilst talking to you, I just noticed that my spelling's atrocious. I called Sword Coast... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, what is that? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Let, let's go fix that right now. So rename. <laughs> sword. Okay, so hopefully I'll spell it a bit better this time. There we go. That smells better. Right, so. So Sojour enables you to add, uh, the, I guess, these tokens onto the map to represent map elements. And you can make those as complex or as simple as you want. Uh, but it's got another trick up its sleeve. Uh, and that is, Sojour provides the ability to link maps together, associated maps. So, like, we know this is the Cragmore hideout, and we also know, if we look at um, these maps, the Cragmore hideout is this thing here. 
and we can actually link these maps together uh, using built-in functionality in Social. But before we can do that, we need to import this map. So let's go do that now. And once again, we're, we're going to use Social's building screenshot functionality. And in fact, whenever I've used it, um, I tend to nearly always use from screenshot because of the nature of the games I play. Once again, left click and another left click to pull it in. Crack more hideouts. Let's make sure I spell it correctly this time. Yeah, that's looking good, I think. We put it in, and again, I highly recommend whenever you pull a map in, go ahead and scale it. So this one, one square, five feet. Let's go do that now before we forget. And uh, next, yeah, where to scale? Let's zoom in a bit. And there you go. Uh, so social records is 143 feet by 97 feet. Uh, and that's now properly scaled at its own scale. And of course, if you drag a character on there, it should look to scale. Yeah, they all looked broadly to scale with the beds now. And that's because Sojour, uh once you scale map, it endeavors to scale your tokens. Of course, um, it has some rules in and around that. So if you have a large scale map, uh, obviously, if we look at, say, the Sword Coast, uh, it obviously hasn't scaled your characters properly there because if it had you wouldn't be able to see them they'd be really really tiny so social does have some general rules on how it scales things and at the end of the day you don't need to take the default scales i mean if if for this map you wanted Miri to be a little bit smaller you can use i believe it's the control and mouse wheel yeah there you go make her smaller make her bigger completely up to you social is very flexible in, in that respect so what we're going to do, we've got the Cragmore hideout here, which is this cave system, and we know it's actually this on this map. So what Social does, it has this thing called map linking, and we can add a map link. And there are two ways. You can either use the button up here to add a map link, or you can right click on the map and click add map link. When you do that, you get this red see-through circular area, and you can change the size of that area by using the mouse wheel and control key. And basically what that red area represents is what's going to be your hotspot that you'll double click on to get to your maps that you want to link. So we're going to set up our hotspot over Crag 1. I think that's about the right size. We'll leave it that size. All you need to do is left click it to place the hotspot down. And then you get given this uh, dialog window and there you get to pick your maps and it will list all the maps in your current campaign. Uh, now, obviously, we do want to link it to Fandlin because that isn't Fandlin. We want to link it to Cragmore. So let's hit Cragmore and hit OK. So, and that disappeared. And you think, oh, that did a lot. But it has because what you'll find is now I can double click on this. And in fact, notice that the cursor has now changed our hands. And if I double click on it, it'll take me straight to uh, this map. And you can link as many maps together as you want. And even if the map's not loaded, if you double click, it will still take you there. It'll just take a little bit of time when it uh, loads it up. So there you go. And you can link as many maps as you want. And you can add as many map links as you want. So for instance, we want to link Fandlin. All we need to do, right click again, add map link. And let's go and make that a little bit bigger to match that circle there. And again, we'll pick Fandlin, hit OK. And now when I double click that, it'll take me straight to Fandlin. So it's a, it's a really great feature to link all your maps together. Now. If you've got a map like this and you're thinking and you're scratching your head and you're thinking where are all my map links i need to look at them to maybe edit them there is a button up here which shows them up and so as you can see they're now all visible now I mean, you can leave it on if you want to leave it on and that way it shows them up and you can actually right click on them and then edit the map link delete the map link and when you edit them you can actually change the map link's name and you can change its size you can even move it around so you you get all sorts of options and of course you can turn that back off again so yeah, map linking, it's a very handy function and, and especially with these large scale maps, it enables you to add in your discoveries onto the map in real time as you discover them and then dynamically link them to the actual detailed maps. So yeah, very, very handy feature. Right, uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, what I call encounter maps. Uh, you've all been there, you've, you're, you're playing an adventure and all of a sudden a situation arises in your adventure that needs a map, but the scenario you're using doesn't have a map 
for this particular situation. What do you do? Well, Sojour provides you the number of what we call blank maps and all you need to do to get them is right click and hit add blank map. And all you need to do is give it a name, let's just call this an encounter. And you get a, a choice of a variety of maps. So for instance, brown empty, brown with squares, brown with hexes, or maybe green empty and so forth. So you can go ahead and pick uh, a map that would be suitable for your encounter. So we're gonna go brown with hexes. Okay, uh, and there you go, you have your blank map ready for your encounter. And once again, you can scale this just like all the other maps. So I don't know, let's make this five feet across, perhaps. I don't know if I need to hit register scale. That does make a difference, right? And let's zoom in a bit just to get some accuracy. There you go, that's now scaled. We now have a nice little scale, and if we drag our characters on, they're all nicely scaled as well. So you've got your encounter map, but what Social also provides you, which you saw a little bit of earlier, is some um, admittedly crude drawing tools to enable you to quickly set the scene. Now you're never going to create a work of art with these drawing tools, I can tell you that right now. And I suspect even after I've iterated on them a few times, you will still want to be able to create a work of art. If you want to create a work of art map-wise, uh, I highly recommend you use external tools. Uh, and the one I use is Campaign Cartographer, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, if you ever want to create maps, that is, at least for me, uh, the go-to tool is this one here. Uh, and you can create some really stunning looking maps for that. But anyway, uh, we're back to our situation. We need a quick and dirty encounter map. And we can use our drawing tools and they all work the same way in that you need to pick a color and a line width first. So I don't know, let's go for brown and let's go for the thinnest line width to begin with. And you get a choice of drawing freehand, drawing uh, straight lines, drawing rectangles or drawing circles. Let's go freehand to begin with. So I don't know, let's say we're in some kind of cave, outside of a cave maybe. Uh, this is gonna be a terrible drawing because I am like the worst person ever when it comes to art. Good at programming, not so good at art. So that could be like our cave entrance. Um, a really bad cave entrance, I hasten to add. Uh, uh, but Sojour enables you to also, you can change the line width. So for example, uh, let me show you an example of a, a really w uh, wide one. This is the widest line that Sojour can draw, by the way. I'm gonna let me uh, get back to drawing mode. Yeah, look how wide that is. So you get a variety of um, sizes. And by the way, this is all saved. So if you were to leave Sojour come back in, this will be exactly as you found it. Uh, let's go change this to another colour. Let's, I don't know, let's go for gopping green because we, we have no taste. So let's put some straight lines in. And it's the same kind of thing again. You pick the colour, you, you pick the line width. Let's go for a three this time. Uh, but with um, the rubber banding, you click once and you get a nice rubber band. You click a second time to anchor that end, then you get another rubber band and you, you keep clicking like that. And then when you've got to your last point, you just right click and that ends it. So it's quite flexible and just like all the other tools on this palette, uh, it's, it has a toggle so when it's got the blue outline around it, you, you stay in that mode. And it, in this case, the cursor is actually changed to a pen. Uh, but you, you can come out of that again by hitting escape or by picking one of the other drawing modes. Uh, so you do the same rectangles, let's go draw some rectangles, uh, let's pick a colour, uh, let's go for purple, this is going to be a really horrible map. <laughs> Uh, let's make it under size 2, click that and first time you click you get your rectangle. You can do a number of things with this rectangle. You can rotate it with the mouse wheel, you can change the width with the control key and you can change the height. So you get quite a lot of flexibility and you know you pick where you want it and then just drop it down and it becomes part of the map. Now you're probably thinking right now that's a lot of shortcuts to remember, but you don't have to remember them. Uh, and the reason why is Sojour provides you with a few little features to help you with this. The first is the map pane, just like with journals, comes with this little helper window, which you get by clicking uh, this question mark button. And this helper window is modeless. You can drag it off wherever you want. It stays on top, uh, but it doesn't affect Sojour's operation anyway. So you can carry on uh, doing stuff like drawing, um, whilst that's up. 
it, it's a very handy thing. You can actually look at this and see what the various shortcuts are. So it's, it's quite handy when you're starting off. Uh, and of course, there is the manual, uh, the huge 142 page manual. So yeah, if, if you want to see how to do things, that's going to be your de facto reference. If you want to find something in it, the uh, the, the front is, uh, it does have links. So, you know, if you want to go to the map section, you just click that and it's straight to the map section. So yeah, it's, it's quite a handy uh, reference. And of course we could draw circles in exactly the same way. You know, you, you pick a random color, let's go orange. Uh, pick a width, let's go size four. Pick circles, and it's the same kind of thing. You move around where you want it, and it's mouse wheel to change the size, and then you just drop it down, and it's done. And if you're unhappy with any of these bits and bobs, you can't edit them after the fact. It's just a limitation of the drawing system because it's designed for quick and dirty drawings. But you can remove them. So you know, if we're not happy with the purple line there, we just erase it, or maybe that circle is getting on there, so erase it, and then just redraw it. So, uh, as I said, this isn't designed for creating works of art, it's designed for those quick and dirty encounter maps and hopefully with the other combinations of uh, blank map that we provide, uh, you can pick a style that will suit you. Now, now speaking of these styles, they're fixed for the moment. Uh, I, I believe in a future iteration I, I've, I've got this planned so you can actually change this list, but if you don't particularly like I don't know, maybe this brown map is exactly the wrong shade of brown for you, or maybe it's not big enough. Um, for all you modders out there, you can actually change uh, the, this map, and all you need to do, go to Sojour's installation directory, which is normally under Program Files, Polysoft, into Sojour, and then into the Map Templates folder, and that's where these templates hang out. And they're normal image files, bulk standard normal image files. So all you need to do, replace whichever one that you want to replace with your one, uh, it needs to be a PNG and it needs to retain the same name, but other than that, it should just work. So if you are unhappy with any of these default templates, just replace them. Uh, it's simple enough to do. But as I say, in, in a future iteration, my intent is to make that system a little bit more flexible anyway. And of course, you're not limited to just drawing on these maps. You, you can, as we saw on Sword Coast, you can draw on the big maps too. So it, it's, it's fairly flexible in that respect. Now, so far I've been showing off uh, Sojour's main bit of functionality, which is capturing stuff from screenshots, which shouldn't be underestimated, especially if you play pre-written adventures, you can use this just to go grab stuff. And later on you'll see it actually create counters directly from your books as well, but that's for another video. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll show you the more traditional way of adding a map, just to prove that it can do that. And that you use the top entry, which is just add map. Uh, and in this case, you can do it directly from your filing system. So I'm going to pick a random map. This is one I took, I think, from one of my uh, RuneQuest campaigns. Just call it test. Uh, and this is the traditional pull it in as a file jobby. Uh, and it works just like the others, and you can go scale it and so forth. So yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Um, of course, you can remove maps. So uh, the other thing you can do with the map pane as well is there's a little button up here which enables you to effectively hide this half of Sojour. So you can do that. And I guess that's handy if you're going to be using this, I don't know, some kind of... Uh, maybe you're using Sojour in a multiplayer game, heaven forbid, and maybe you're using it as a mapping surface. And this would be a good thing to do because then you can set it to take up uh, almost the whole screen there. And of course, when you finish, you just click that button again and it, it toggles it back. So that's quite handy. Another thing you can do with maps, but I'll show you this uh, when we cover characters, you can turn off the health bars if you wish. Uh, everything's toggled on off. And that's remembered for each individual map. So each map can keep that particular status. So that's uh, most of I want to show you with maps. So I guess the last thing I want to talk about is limitations and there are some limitations. Uh, Sojour, at least for the moment, it's a 32-bit application. It's reliant on some relatively oldish technology and as a result it has some limitations with regards to file size. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to import a map which I know is too big and Sojour is going to present me with an error message. This is normal and I'm going to show you uh, what you can do if you see this, uh, because I suspect a few of you might see this uh, first time. I, so 
I created this huge map uh, when I was um, working on social uh, for testing purposes basically. I wanted to see how far I could push things. Uh, do I have it there? Oh, I didn't put it in there. Okay, so I need to go into my repo, social assets. <laughs> so I go all the way down. Uh, is it Karl Manor? I think it's Karl Manor. And it's this one here. Yeah, that beast. So that's like, that's 145 megabytes and it's like 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. It's huge, basically. So we're going to attempt to import that in and see what happens. Bang, error message. And the error message is saying, image file is too large. Uh, and what it's actually telling us is, please pick a file that has a maximum file size of 10 megabytes. Now you're probably sat there thinking, 10 megabytes, that's bloody stingy. And it is, but you can change it. As uh, Social allows you to, to change these settings. Uh, but the reason why I default it to 10 megabytes is, I have no idea the capabilities of your system. And as it turned out for my testing, it's very difficult for me to measure those capabilities in software, at least to do it accurately and reliably. So what I do instead is I set Social up with some rather conservative map settings, which you can find under settings and under map settings. And by default, it has enable uh, max map size limitations ticked by default, but you don't need to leave that on. Uh, and I can show you it off in a second. So there are two settings here. The first is the maximum map size in terms of physical file size. And you can change this. Uh, you, well, you can disable it or you can change it. You can make it smaller or you can make it bigger. Uh, by default, I go for a, a paltry 10 megabytes uh, because uh, I don't want people complaining to me. Oh, I imported this and all sorts of other weird error messages are coming on that i'd much rather you had a a dedicated error message that led you to this screen so so be aware if you're importing a, a map and social tells you it's too big you can if your machine's capable of it come in here and just change the max map size setting or even disable it and in fact uh, my home installations have this disabled i only enabled it for the purposes of this demonstration to show you this error message now the other map size setting is the pixels one and that works a little bit differently. The way that works is it's saying if your map is larger on any side than 3000 pixels, downsample it. Uh, in other words, resize the map uh, to fit the 3000 pixel limitation. Now the, the, what that will result in most of the time is slightly blurry maps. So if you see blurry maps in the right hand pane, the chances are You've tried to import one that's a little bit too big and Sojour's automatically downsized it on your behalf. And in fact, it, maybe some of the maps I took screenshots of were downsized because my screen here is actually a lot bigger uh, than 3000 I'm at, at 4K. So you, you can change those values up and down or like I do it, you can just turn them off. Just be aware that with it off, you might see other error messages uh, as we run out of memory. So that's what I'm going to do, just to give you an example of what can happen when things go wrong. We're, we're going to really push social. We're going to use that test uh, map, the 145 megabyte one, and, and see where we can go. Because uh, um, we're going to get really techy here, but basically C Sharp uh, uh, is notorious for holding on to memory, even when you tell it not to. And uh, I suspect if we try to import that huge map, um, we might still get an error message, even though we've disabled uh, our settings. But let's go for it. I just want to prove to you that uh, there are limits to uh, Sojour's map sizes. Is this going to work? It's thinking about it. Yeah, it's it had a, an issue loading the image, uh, which is unfortunate. But um, as I mentioned, .NET is quite stingy of releasing memory and the easiest way to get it to release memory is to actually uh, uh, go um, uh, and drop it. So we've just dropped it, restart it again and that generally gives you a, a clean slate on the memory front. Let's try that one again. Now uh, that map was specially designed to push Sojour and it's, it's right on the limit so we might see a few more messages but let's go for it. So I hear my computer winding up. It's thinking about it. Is it going to do it? It might not. It might. We don't know yet. Oh, we get to add a name. Let's just call some test. Hit OK. 
Japan. Yeah. It, 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 so it only had just enough memory to um, import it. That's why it's there as test, but it didn't have enough to open it. So if we were to shut it down and open it again, um, we should reload it. But like I said, this is probably show, uh, showing Sojo in a really bad light, but it's not. I'm, I'm showing you the maximum limits. And in a second, I'll show you what a normal map looks like. Okay, it's not going to work for us this time. But I have had it open in the past. Uh, it's a very big map. Uh, but to give you some context, um, if we go and browse our maps directory now, just to see what the file sizes are for the normal maps. So, in fact, here's our map, the big one. And look, it's ended up at 258 megabytes after it's been converted to a texture. And that's, that's ginormous. That's like really, really big. And if we compare uh, that to our normal maps, the ones that we were playing on just now, like uh, Fandolin, that's 17 megabytes. Uh, Sword Coast, 19. And uh, the K is 15. In fact, looking at those sizes, I can tell you right now, they were all downsampled because of the setting I had on here. Uh, so they probably appeared a little bit more blurry than they needed to. Um, I'm kind of interested in running a, a little test here. Let's go do this <laughs> live on video. Well, it's not live, but you get my drift. So uh, let's just get rid of our test one because that's just horrendously huge. But if we have a look at, I don't know, Fandolin. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry there. Let's try and import it a second time. Uh, but this time, let's make sure our settings are off. And this would be a good example to show you. Assuming we can see a difference, we might not be able to see a difference. So. Let's pull this up. Let's get Fandlin back in the frame again. There it is. And we're going to pull that one in once more. But this time without our restrictions in place. And we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, I have seen, like I say, larger file sizes for this, which is why I thought 17 megabytes, that's quite small. So let's go capture that again, but this time with those limitations off. So add back for the screenshot. Pop that on there, put it in, and we'll call it P2 because I can't be bothered to type out Fandlin. And this is what the map looks like with restrictions off. So if we go to our original one, if we go by the smithy, so okay, that's is a little bit blurry there. Is it as blurry with the non reduced one? Let's have a look. It might be, we don't know yet until we have a look. It's hard to tell. It's close. Yeah, okay, that is a bit blurrier. So here you're seeing more of the, I guess, the pixelation uh, caused by the original author's tools. Uh, whereas with the one that got downsampled, it's just generally more blurry. So uh, tip of the day, if you're happy to run with these restrictions off, uh, then I recommend turning them off. And in that way, when you import your maps, you get them at the best quality they can be. But be aware, Sojour does have its limits. Uh, and during my testing, I found that to be about 10,000 by 10,000 pixels and at around 145 megabytes, which is huge. Uh, if you're importing any normal map, you should not get anywhere near those limits. And as we saw when we, um, looked at our particular maps, they were much smaller. So in fact, we can actually look at the two family maps. So one of them is 17, that's our original one, whereas our newly imported one is 50. So it's, yeah, it's double, more than double the size. So one would assume double the detail, but not necessarily, but certainly better fidelity. So that is a handy thing to know. And I did hum and ah about whether or not to put this into Sojour at all, but I, I felt it was necessary because I can't say up front what your system is going to be. You might be running Sojour on a very old laptop, uh, maybe very little video RAM and so forth. Uh, so I, I felt it was necessary to have it automatically downsized and automatically limit you to 10 megabytes by default. And then that way, uh, my thinking was that if you try to put in a bigger file, you'd see the error message and that would take you here. And then you could adjust this to be what you wanted it to be. Or do what I do, just turn it off. So uh, I guess that's why I want to show maps. Uh, hopefully uh, you, you find the maps that you get with Sojour um, uh, pretty flexible in terms of 
uh, how you import them, the fact you can put them in for screenshots. Hopefully you find them nice and smooth as well. It actually uses my own custom graphics engine from Ancient Armies called Ionian, so it's not a commercial engine at all. Um, but it does seem to run pretty smooth. Uh, and as I said, very flexible. I, I, I don't know many tools that can capture and scale maps directly from scenario PDFs, whereas Sojour can absolutely do that. So that's what I'm going to talk about on this particular presentation. The next tutorial I'm going to cover will be all about characters and all about tokens and showing off how in Sojour you can actually create circular tokens directly from your scenario PDFs. But that's for another time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. If you like what you saw, subscribe or maybe like the video. If you really liked what you saw and you don't own Sojour, uh, go to the drive through uh, RPG uh, on the link provided on this video and go and buy it. And uh, like I say, it only costs $10 USD and there's no DRM, there are no servers and you get free updates. So, you know, it, once you've bought it, it's kind of yours for life. And because of the way the screenshotting tools work, you don't have to buy anything else to use it. It's, it's not one of those VTTs that you have to keep buying modules for it. There's no need to. Uh, the only modules you need to buy are the books from the actual publishers themselves to get the PDFs. And then Sojour will automatically uh, pull stuff in from those books, basically. So anyway, that's all I want to cover. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.